That's not country music. Have you ever said that? I know I have a few times. But then I got to thinking, well, what do we mean when we say that? Is it just we don't like that music? Or is there something intrinsic to country music that makes it country? So I started thinking about it, doing some research. And what I found is really from the beginning, country music has been trying to evolve to some degree. And as an art form, it does need to evolve, otherwise it's going to die. And country music itself was an amalgamation of different sounds. So a little bit of that Celtic influence, African-American music influence. So there's a lot that came before country music, before it was country music. But we tend to think of that traditional sound, a little bit more of that bluegrass, the string band, the fiddles, all of that. But even back in the 1930s, there was a group called the Prairie Ramblers who were experimenting with pop and jazz sounds. Okay, then you got the 50s where we started bringing in um, string sections and backing vocalists. Garth Brooks shook things up in the 90s when he injected a whole rock influence in his live shows. In 1974, there was all kinds of uproar because Olivia Newton-John took home the CMA Vocalist of the Year Award. So there has always been this push against any sort of pop or rock influence in country music. And so we always have that push back. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing because country music is one of those genres that, and maybe one of the few genres that likes to hold to tradition, right? So there are a lot of people who believe that that traditional country sound that has more string in instruments, not as many electric guitars, that um, the fiddle, the steel guitar, that's true country music. Now, I don't know that that's fully all that makes it country music, but that is a sound. It's a traditional sound, and that's what a lot of people are looking for. But I, I was like... An, Okay, well, what makes a country song a country song? So I came up with four elements to try and define it, and I don't know that I have, but let, let's talk about them for a minute. So first off, to me, country music is the best genre for telling a story. All right, and country music gets into just the everyday. It tells a story beginning, middle, and end, whereas a lot of pop and rock tend to not necessarily have a story. Doesn't make them bad. They're just not as story oriented. But just because a song is a story song does not mean it's a country song because there are great pop and rock and blues and I'm sure jazz story songs. So that's not the only thing that makes a country song country is the story. So what about the sound? Now, we've already talked a little bit. A lot of traditionalists, they want to hear um, the fiddle, the mandolin, the steel guitar. That's tradition. That's country to them. And I'll admit, I, I don't know any other genre that uses a steel guitar. Now, if you do, please leave a comment down below because I'd love to know what other genres are using a steel guitar. But I do think the steel guitar is pretty iconic for country music. But if there's no steel guitar in the song, does that mean it's not a country song? I don't think so. So it's not just the specific instruments. There is something that sounds country. So what exactly is that? I'm not exactly sure. Am I doing a good job of explaining this? I'm, I'm not sure I'm defining country music yet. <laughs> So <laughs> this may be something that we're going to have to discuss for a long time, but let's keep going. What about the vocals? Now, if you recall back in the 90s, and that's when I came into country music and discovered it, twang was big, all right? Um, you knew it was country music when you heard that twang. And in fact, if you remember back in the day when Tim McGraw was first getting started, that boy had a twang. It was clear as day. Well, if you listen to his more recent stuff, the twang is gone. All right, so as a genre, country music has moved away from the twang. So that in itself 
does not make it country music. But I do think the way the vocalizations are done and the, the tones and the register in which they're sung do make it more country. And one of the problems I have at the moment with several of the new and up and coming uh, female country singers, and it's not that they don't have beautiful voices, but a lot of their voices are kind of this light, little more soprano, um, just they don't have as much weight to them as I would say someone like uh, Terry Clark, Trisha Yearwood, Reba McIntyre, Martina McBride. Those four ladies, when you heard their songs, you're like, wow, those are country vocalists. Whereas several of the ones that are out there today don't speak to me like that. And again, that's not to say that they don't have great voices. It just doesn't, it just doesn't say country to me. But then you have someone like Lady Wilson, um, so, uh, Casey Musgraves. I forgot her name for a minute. Uh, Casey Musgraves. You know, so there are some female vocalists out there that have more of what I consider more of a country sound to their voice. So is, is it how we vocalize, how the singers vocalize those songs? One of the problems I have with a lot of the vocalizations is if I wasn't watching a video, if I was just listening to the radio and I heard a song, sometimes I can't tell. Is this a country song or is it a pop song? And so, and the vocalizations are part of that issue. Now, if I'm watching the video and I hear the music, I hear the, the vocalizations, and it still sounds pop to me, and the only thing that's country about it is that the artist has a cowboy hat, jeans, and cowboy boots on, or if it's a girl, cowgirl hat and cowgirl boots, and that's the only way you know it's a country song, then I'm sorry, it's a pop song trying to be country. All right, and to me, I'm going to say it, that's not country. All right, you may disagree. But anyway, so the vocalization is important. What about the emotion that that song evokes? Now, I think all genres of music can evoke emotion, but because country music has so many of those story songs that are based in real life, in struggle, in tragedy, in just rough times, heartbreak, there is nothing better than a country music song to tug at your heartstrings and, you know, produce some tears. Now, again, not that pop and rock can't do that as well, but I think country music is really, really good at it. All right, so those, those are four elements, and I still don't think I've defined what country music is, because I think when it all comes down to it, it's kind of like, what do you enjoy? And I spent a bunch of time in Texas, Austin area, and so I heard a lot of that Texas music, the red dirt scene, and in Texas, they like to mix their country with little rock, little blues, and I like that. That speaks to me. Okay, I like that. Even a little pop, you know, um, Luke Bryan. Okay, you have no doubt that Luke Bryan is country. You listen to his voice. Um, you know he grew up in Georgia. He, he loves all those country things. But honestly, a lot of his songs are pop country. That doesn't make him bad, and I like a lot of his music, but I also know he can do the deeper stuff, drink a beer. All right, that song right there, written uh, at least partially by Chris Stapleton, I mean, great, great song, so he can do it. And so for an artist like Luke Bryan, I don't have a problem with him being more in a little more pop, or pop country, you know, I would definitely call him pop country in a good way, because I know he's got the, the roots in country music, I guess. Um, like I said, if you're singing a pop song, but you got a cowboy hat, jeans, and, and cowboy boots on, you're a pop singer trying to be country. And in that, for me, I'm going to say this, and I'm sure there are going to be some people going to be mad at this, but 
in my mind, you're really just a poser. If you want to do pop, go and do pop. There's nothing wrong with that. Some pop music is great. As an example, I love ABBA. All right, back from the 70s and early 80s. ABBA put out some great music, but a lot of that, you know, that 70s dance music, you know, it's as pop as you can get. But if you listen to some of their album tracks, man, Bjorn and Benny wrote some deep music that were on the album. So, again, pop music can go both ways. So, I'm not going to say pop country is bad. It's just, I think what I'm getting at is, what do you like? And you know what? If a more pop-oriented artist brings more people to check out country music, because they may start out with Luke Bryan or a pop country artist, and then go, hey, well, who's this other person? Oh, this Chris Stapleton. Ooh, I like what he's doing. And then, you know, might even get deeper into some of the more traditional sounding artists. William Beckman out of, te out of Texas, 23 years old, making traditional country music and doing it wonderfully. So there is so much variety out there now in country music. So yeah, on Top 40 Radio, you hear a lot of pop country. And that's what Top 40 is putting out. That's what the major labels are putting out. Okay, but we have Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Bandcamp, all these different tools at our disposal to go find the country music we enjoy. And the fact that we are in a period where... We have such variety in our country music and the fact that we are mixing genres. We have created a band called We, you know, like I was involved with it. <laughs> but, you know, there is a band called Boy Named Banjo. And this five piece group out of Nashville, the way I describe their music is what would happen if bluegrass, modern country, and rock had a love child. All right, think about that for a minute. These guys, they have the bluegrass instruments in there, right? So they got a banjo, boy named Banjo. They have to have a banjo, right? But banjo, mandolin, acoustic guitars, but then they got the, um, got the electric guitars. They got drums. So they seamlessly move between more bluegrassy numbers. You listen to that song, uh, some of their songs, like, that's bluegrass. Then they have a song that is more modern country. And then they have this song called Heart Attack that has a strong banjo lead in there. And so it's it's has a bit of a bluegrassy feel and you're going along and then all of a sudden it slams into a rock number. If we were not in the environment that we're in now, Boy Named Banjo would not exist. But right now, because it is so open and there are so many ways for bands to get their music out there. These guys have a great shot. And yeah, I think they're being marketed under the Americana label or genre. But for me, they're country, right? So they're mixing it up. So I love that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I think every generation pushes back against influences on their music that they don't like, that they grew up with. And it's like, no, that's not country music. What I like, that's country music. And that's okay, because you know what? You don't have to like it all. I don't like all the country music that's out there, that's out there today. I didn't like everything that was out in the 90s. I didn't like everything from the 60s or the 50s or the 30s, right? We all have our different opinions. So what I'm thinking is, listen to what you like. Ignore the rest. We don't have to put down the stuff we don't like. Just if you like it, great. If you don't, ignore it. And eventually things will shift again because they always do. Back in the 90s, we had that neo-traditional movement. And again, it was probably a pushback against a little too much pop or rock trying to get in. And... We'll see that again, 
more traditional sounds coming in, they're out there now. Go find them. If you want that traditional sound, go find it. Go listen to it. If you like the pop music, great. But hey, check out some of our other great music. If you like that 90s sound, great. You can find it. And there are still people doing music similar to what they did in the 90s. So again, listen to what you like. Ignore the rest. But, and I'm going to leave you with this last thought. For the love of all that is good and right in the world. Stop the snap tracks, the finger snaps, and the drum machines. Please, just stop. <laughs>